I'm Laura Schlesinger. Uh, I'm a partner of Venture Gain Legal. We focus primarily on startups in the technology industry. So we promote women in business and technology entrepreneurship. When you're starting a business, it's so important to have things structured correctly. So if you're a high growth startup like we see a lot of in uh, Silicon Valley, it's really important to have a C-Corp because investors, for the most part, certainly venture capitalists, can't put investment funds into an LLC. And so knowing what is going to be appropriate for your type of business for your industry really helps you get set up for the long run because what we end up having is people that they're they're thinking short term they do something to save money for six months and they actually don't save money because in the long run they have to change everything and pay all these legal fees in order to do so and there's delays getting their investor money in and all sorts of stuff so it's important to find out what you need to do and figure out a game plan for doing that Nowadays, everybody talks about how important branding is and your brand identity and the story that you tell, and all of that is true and it's fantastic. From the legal standpoint, what I have to see a lot of is people that have this great idea and they have this great brand image and they have all this stuff, but the fact is somebody else is using something that sounds very similar and they just don't care. They, you know, they buy a similar URL because the exact one that they want is taken. That's always a red flag. You know, they don't bother to clear the trademark. They, they slap their name on all sorts of of marketing collateral and, and start building their brand and then they have to change the name which is painful on an emotional level but also they're now throwing away all their marketing material and having to buy new things and new URLs so it's really important to kind of do your research ahead of time so you don't sink all that money. The other major category of mistakes I see at the early stage is you're trying to throw your startup together and your roommate's buddy from college does some coding for you on the weekends and you're like, this is great, he's doing it for free, you don't really think much about it, it's a, it's a handshake and a nod and a smile. And then a year later when you've got some venture capitalists that want to give you you know, a couple million dollars and they look at your capitalization table and they say, oh, does anybody else work on this? Did anybody else have any input into this? You're like, oh, or there's this guy and, but you know, not a big deal. And they're like, he could come up and, and claim that he owns a certain percentage of the company. You need to get him to sign off on this. So you really have to have agreements with everybody that you work with, make it clear they're a contractor, not a co-founder, or if they're a co-founder, you need to work out what that means and have an understanding and set expectations early on. I find that people who are experienced entrepreneurs who've done it at least once always come to you right away because they've been through it before, they've been burned, they know how important it is to have good counsel and they also know that a good attorney that works with works with startups and early stage companies will give you a risk analysis and a priority list of what you have to do. So it's not a, you know, I either have to spend a million dollars or zero. They can really say, here's what you really absolutely have to do first, and here's how we can make it happen within your budget, and then here's how you need to roll it out over the next couple of years. They'll really make it work for you.